I'm so excited to have you on today. Me too. I'm so excited to be here. I feel like I've, well, I know I've been following you forever, but also we have the same agent. So I've always like heard of all the amazing things that you're doing. And it's so fun to finally get to meet IRL and off Instagram. No, I'm so excited. It's so nice to like put a face to a name because I feel like through this industry, there's so many people you know through Instagram. Yes. And then when you're at an event, you see them and you're like, I feel like I've known you for years, but should I go up and say hi? Like, it's always like... Isn't that a crazy, weird it's feeling? It's so weird. There was actually someone who I saw at a lunch two days ago who I have never met in real life, but literally went up to her and hugged her and was like, hey, how are you? I and I could tell her eyes were like darting. She was like, do I know this person? But my subconscious literally was like, oh, you know her, you follow her, you see her stuff every day. No, I know. It's crazy. It's wild. It's like such a weird industry because you feel like you know everyone so well, but... But I do love the camaraderie in that. Me too. Like, I love the fact that, like, I followed you. We kind of connected. And now, and now we're here. here. I, love I love it. it yeah. I love it. How have you been? We're about to start New York Fashion Week. I'm sure you're probably the busiest person. And this year, I'm really trying to choose quality over quantity, which I feel like is what a lot of people are trying to do because it's just there's so much going on throughout the year. And there, it feels like there's so many fashion weeks and months in the year that it, it gets a little crazy. So I'm really trying to pick and choose, like, what I feel like I resonate with the most and what brands I truly love. And I feel like when you first get into the industry, you just feel so much pressure to do everything and anything. And you you feel like a little bit of FOMO. Yeah. And now I feel like I'm at the point where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to focus on the brands that I truly love that I resonate with and just do that. And then obviously, like if there's a show that you want to support, like the designer that you're friends with, do that. But I just think like I'm trying to keep calm. <laughs> I mean, I also think that that's, a testament to like the amount of effort and how hard you've worked in the past few years like not everybody gets to say that they get to pick and choose and I swear this is like I think this is my 15th season and oh. I I know I feel it old. always blows my mind when people are like this is my 15th I'm like yeah it's I'm up there <laughs> has, definitely it, up there. has it changed a lot like yes since you started big time because I remember people were saying that shows were like in Bryant Park and just like yes. big tents. Yes. And now so, you're like running from Soho to Uptown and back and to Brooklyn and it's all crazy. So I would say the original Fashion Week felt a little bit more like a trade show. Yeah. Everybody was in the same tent. Now you get to be able to go to a show and the designer is able to express themselves in a deeper way. It feels yeah. a little bit more theatrical than it did. Right. Because now like you get to go to a show in a venue that the designers picked and they've made the decor emblematic of what the theme is. Exactly. And there's just more, you kind of get to enter their world. It feels a little more artistic. Yes, of course. Like there's more to, I feel like before it was also a lot of buyers. Yes. It was, that was kind of the situation. And I remember seeing someone on TikTok saying that they were like a blogger, like when that was like first starting and everyone was so mad when the bloggers started going to the show. It shows. was a big thing. I can't even imagine like. I can't even believe that I'm talking about it as if it's like a historical <laughs> reference point right now. That makes me feel old, even it's though I'm crazy. not that old. But yes, those were a few interesting years where there was a massive shift because the argument was, oh, why are influencers taking the seat of a yep. buyer who is actually buying the collection and marketing yeah. it to the world? Exactly. And that's a fair point, mm -hmm. completely. I think my biggest thing today with Fashion Week is that, at least my biggest bone to pick, is that you can have a brand that will invite someone that is completely completely disconnected from their brand and disconnected right. from the fashion world and they're just being invited for views yeah and that's always a little bit weird yeah because if that's taking the seat of someone who's in the industry and loves the brand and has supported the brand then that's where things get a little bit confusing yep. but I do again I think with everything and especially fashion it's a pendulum yeah we swing to one side swing to the other and then find our way in the middle somewhere and I think now we're really like leveling out to a point it's a little better but yeah, yeah I mean you know things I have to evolve yeah I think TikTok also really changed absolutely the industry because a lot of people on TikTok just started going to New York Fashion Week events too and that changed the whole view of everything as well and I think New York Fashion Week feels a lot more event based to me yes than say Milan or Paris um so I see a lot of like beauty brands activating which is fun because I think it's a great moment for them to jump in on and have everyone together but I think TikTok has definitely changed like the past few years within the fashion industry as well it's been really fun watching you dive into the fashion community because I've you. followed you for so long and obviously die for your beauty but at the same time, I love watching people that I love also get the opportunity to expand into mm -hmm. different markets. And that's what I find most interesting about so social media today is we have this over like, ability to overlap. Yep. And I just, I love seeing your beauty be then iterated in fashion. Thank you. They feel so 
like connected. Like even what you wore to Marc Jacobs two weeks ago, it felt like one of your beauty looks. Exactly. That's what I love about fashion too is you're kind of like a chameleon and with beauty you can really do anything, everything and anything. So with fashion, it's so nice to be able to bring beauty into it and be like, okay, Marc Jacobs is this vibe, this aesthetic. This is the type of beauty and hair and glam that feels right for this moment. And then maybe like a different show would feel maybe softer, less makeup, more neutral outfit. So I like that I can bring the beauty aspect into fashion and kind of tweak it to each show and designer. It sounds like you are very organized. Like you have a show and you're planning every element of that. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into it, um, especially with like now just starting to dip into the fashion community. It's like you have to be careful with your choices. And I feel like the decisions you make in the beginning of your career are kind of what set you up long term. And that's just how I feel with beauty too. Like people really put me in a box with the foundation challenge and I loved that it was fun it was like such a moment for me in that time but now I'm in a new era and I think it's okay for people to grow and try new things and I still love my foundation technique but I'm in a new era of my life where I want to try more natural makeup or more editorial and show my freckles when I first started doing all of this makeup and TikTok I hated my freckles like that's where the foundation technique stemmed from so it's kind of nice that I'm in this new era and I'm trying new things but it's definitely something that was hard to push through when people put you in this box and are like no this is just what you do and you're you're never going to be able to like do fashion. So we just rebranded the podcast two weeks ago and I was so scared at this idea of 180ing and putting something new out. It's so scary. It's so scary but Honestly, watching you do it so seamlessly over the past year, I was like, you know what? She's doing it. And I think you're doing it in such a vulnerable way too, which is crucial. You have to bring your audience along for the ride. You have to. Otherwise, they're going to feel like they're left behind. You have to bring your like the old things that people loved and know you for into the new era. And that like can be doing Foundation Fridays or like a really cool glam look for Marc Jacobs with a wig, whatever it is. But you have to bring those aspects into the new era, the new industry you're doing because people are going to be like, wait, this is like a whole new person. I feel like I don't know them anymore. And they they followed you for the person they know. That I can bring from this old era into this new one while still giving a fresh new take. Exactly. It's it's so challenging. And I would, I will say like transitioning from, or not transitioning from beauty to fashion because I feel like, They're very cohesive now, but like bringing the two industries together in my way has definitely been a challenge, but I'm always up for a challenge and it's always fun for me, but it's definitely like you have to put so much thought into it and it takes time. Like it's not going to happen overnight and it just, you have to have so much patience and I feel like you also have to have thick skin because there's a lot of people who say you can't do it, no, or a lot of rejection and if you take that to heart like it's just you're not you're not gonna feel motivated to move forward and I feel like what's helped me is like all the hate comments that I got on TikTok has like prepped me for just like any rejection it's like whatever if you believe in yourself and you want to do it then manifest it you know I love that and it's so true I want to go back to the beginning you and I just went like head (laughs) head into like fashion week and all the things there's just so many things I want to talk to you about but I want to know what sparked I know you weren't originally in beauty no I want to know what where the spark came from yeah so well I've always loved beauty but I started TikTok with my boyfriend doing couple videos which is like so random I mean it was COVID so we were like what do we do with ourselves like right where were you guys living Miami yeah we were in Miami um everything I mean classes were online my boyfriend was in dental school and all of his stuff was online so we were like let's just get on TikTok and make some videos and I think when I really started seeing the potential of TikTok was when the random couple videos we were making started to go viral and I was like wait what and I'm a very like results oriented person like I need to see numbers I need to see results or I don't have that motivation which is like not the best trait because I know some things are like long-term goals you know but with TikTok that's why I love it so much because it's just like the numbers are there and it motivates you like overnight you wake up and there's a million views you're like what this is crazy agree there's a there's a um halfway mark yeah but I can see how numbers oriented you are exactly yeah yeah. so we started doing the couple videos and then um I was posting six to eight times per day every day for three months because I heard it from some like random person's social media like manager that was like 
and TikTok was so new. So it was just all of like, we were all just like looking at each other's pages. Like, what do we do? What's going on? Like, how do we figure out this algorithm? Um, so I was like, whatever, I have the time and a couple of videos were fun. So we just did like dancing videos, like jumping in the pool. So it was easier to post six to eight times a day compared to like doing beauty. Um, that would be a lot of makeup looks in one day, but a lot of editing. Exactly. Yeah. Once COVID like kind of started coming to an end, we had to go back to school, in-person classes, and my boyfriend couldn't do these couple videos with me anymore he didn't have the time so I remember a comment was like can we see how you do your makeup and I was like okay I don't really know like what they want to see but I just started doing transition videos and like little random tutorials of my eyeliner um and they started blowing up and I so my first video that I remember blowing up was a transition to 21 Savage, like a song. And it just like Cute. went viral. And I was like, okay, let's do this thing. And then I think I started diving into rap from then. And then started doing like the Nicki Minaj, Megan Thee Stallion, all of that. Like that was definitely an era. The rap lip syncing era. And I think that's where a lot of people started to discover my page. Um, and I remember I hit a million followers and then January, a month later, I hit 7 million followers. So I'd gained 6 million in one month. It was just like the craziest thing. And I was like, how is this real life? And I was in my last semester of college and I was just like, okay, like, I guess this is just going to be my full-time job. And it it was a full-time job. Like I took the algorithm and the content very seriously, Um, I would wake up at 6 a.m. because I needed to post by 8 a.m. Otherwise, I felt like, okay, the views aren't going to be as good. So I literally woke up at 6 a.m., did like the whole thing, and then posted by 8. And then I think I posted three makeup looks today. And then my boyfriend was like, you should post a video like taking off your makeup, like doing skincare. So then you don't have to post as many makeup videos. So then the skincare started to blow up. But it was just like this huge thing. And it was really fun to find new ways of content. Like the skincare was a new content idea, the rap lip syncing. And then I remember when I made my first talking video, like my first get ready with me and everyone freaked out. They were like, we didn't know that you were American we thought you were some like random Russian person like they were like you have an American accent this is so weird so I think that's why a lot of my followers if you look at my um demographics it's all like Egypt Mexico just like the most random that you wouldn't expect that's amazing yeah and when I travel like to Mexico or places like that there's so many people who come say hi to me like way more than in New York and it's just like it's crazy that there's so many people around the world who know my content I think for people who are listening right now who are on TikTok or on the internet even myself who is you know just turned 30 evolving in my career you know you went from boyfriend TikTok Mm -hmm. to then like rap TikTok to now talking to the camera big sister talks like and now fashion and now fashion like walking a runway like crazy is that an itch for you where you feel like okay it's time to evolve I always have this saying that if I feel complacent it's like kiss of death Mm -hmm. like I never want to feel stuck in something that I'm doing and I never want to feel like I'm comfortable or on autopilot that's literally me like I've severe ADHD and I cannot sit still like if I have one day where I just get to relax and chill out around the house I'm like this does not feel right like I get major anxiety so I think with beauty I I did so well and I was you know face of like so many campaigns around the world billboards in London on bus stops I was like this is crazy but like what's next and I just felt like I was I was really happy with what I was doing in beauty and I felt like I had accomplished a lot of what I wanted to do Um, and I've always had a passion for fashion if you go back on my Instagram you could probably see um, like my college town I was always taking like I had my friends take little pictures of me around the town but I yeah I hate being complacent and I just feel like there's so many endless possibilities and opportunities and if you have a goal like just go for it like don't be afraid it's it's a lot to to switch into another industry and try and combine them because fashion and makeup is so different yeah like I always was like they go hand in hand they they do and they don't it's very different um how because with with beauty the beauty industry you can really do whatever like I can go 
on TikTok and do a full avatar wet crazy blue look and I'll get like campaigns from any of the brands like it's not like Mac is gonna be like this isn't our aesthetic or NARS is gonna be like we don't that we don't really vibe with that with fashion they want you to be more like the vibe of their their brand yeah it's, it's they like want a, you to fit it's like a skill set versus yeah, an aesthetic exactly so you just have to be more cautious with your choices of glam when you go to certain shows with beauty you can literally do whatever you want and it doesn't matter wow speaking of doing whatever you want it doesn't matter <laughs> i want to talk about foundation challenge yeah. because i feel like the foundation challenge put you on the map in a very interesting way it really carved out this position for you in the beauty industry of a trailblazer mm -hmm. of someone who is doing something so different that you didn't really care what people thought about it you were like this is how i'm doing my makeup you can either follow it but i know you're definitely gonna watch it mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about the inception of the foundation challenge it all started from um me hating my freckles like i i felt so insecure about them i was like why does everybody else have perfect skin like even if they had pimples i'm like i would rather have acne on my face than have freckles like i truly was like this is the worst thing that i could have ever been born with like i i hated it with like all of my heart i love your freckles Thank just you. i love them now there. yeah i i love them now and i appreciate them a lot more but i think when people are younger like you pick yourself apart and you compare yourself to other people i just i didn't know anybody else with freckles except my sister and I was like I am the odd one out this is just so weird like why does my skin look like this um but now like I love it and I think it's so unique and I think it's something that people should embrace whether like it's freckles or whatever it is if you have acne like who cares like literally people are wearing star patches on their face and it's like an aesthetic like it's fun to wear you know I love the time we're living in for that reason yeah it's like I go out in a pimple patch 10 years ago I wouldn't be caught dead in one no people would be like what, what? is that yeah, yeah. But so it all started with that and the beauty blender would absorb so much of my foundation and I was like a broke college student. I was using the Becca Cosmetics Foundation. It was $55 and I would go through so much of it and I remember when I would wash out my beauty blender, like so much foundation would just like come out of it, like globs and I was like, this is not okay. So I thought if I use my hands, it's just going to it's not going to absorb the product it's the warmth of my hands is going to blend it into my skin and I tried it and loved it and the funny thing is that people on TikTok thought I was doing it for clickbait and everybody still to this day everyone's like she wipes it off and like redoes her makeup but it, it really is just like how I started and I think that is important to like if you want to do well on TikTok you need to start with just a passion and your love for something don't go into it thinking how am I going to go viral because I went on just doing my regular technique and it ended up being a viral moment but I didn't realize that and when people were commenting what is she doing I just thought it was normal I was like well people apply sunscreen with their hands like it's probably just like other people do it as well but no it's like the weirdest thing people had ever seen yeah I can see them now yeah. I love them they're so cute thanks it's always funny you can really tell when someone is doing something intentionally to go viral uh -huh. it doesn't hit as much no it really doesn't and you can see it like you can you, like when someone's doing something to not go viral you can see their passion it's actually so amazing hearing how intuitive you are with so many of these insights knowing exactly where your audience is i'm like so in tune to it all what is the like number one thing that you would tell an aspiring TikToker to pay attention to as they're creating content i would say for me like if i don't have good lighting it's gonna do so terrible i think if there's anything to invest in is like a good light because if I'm scrolling on my page and I see something that's really dark and grainy and blurry I'm like I, I just can't like yeah you know I need to see everything that's going on so I think a good light is really important for the content and the algorithm is going to favor that so much more um, but just things like adding viral sounds like I always go on the viral TikTok chart list and I you can add like the first song or the second song um, even if you're doing a get ready with me, you just turn the sound all the way down Ooh. and it'll push your video more because it's it's in that like algorithm with this song that's blowing up. Love all these little tips and tricks. There's just I could go on for hours about it. There's so many little tips and tricks that really make a difference in views. Green screens really help using the effects that TikTok has like they want you to use what the app 
kind of has to offer and I think it's really important like using the green screen effect um adding sounds reply to comment like you know how you can reply to a comment and make a video on it TikTok really likes when you interact with your followers the more you comment the more you just interact with your followers, the the better your content's gonna do. I love that tip. Yeah. Also, it's a great way to build community. Exactly. In my opinion, when I think about makeup, it takes me back to my childhood mm-hmm. of, you know, watching my mom get ready me too. and me wanting to look like her mm-hmm. and feel like an adult and feel really pretty. And I also think makeup is so deeply intertwined into our adolescence in such a crucial way. It's so formative to the way that we express ourselves and it learn really how is. to express ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like I remember the first time I put eyeliner on and I went to like Thanksgiving, I think. And I have four sisters Mm -hmm. and I walked down the stairs and my three older sisters literally grabbed my hair and pulled me into the bathroom because it was all smudgy underneath. Were you the youngest? No, my three older sisters are way older than me. Okay, so you have three older. And one younger who's like, nine years younger that must be brutal to have three older sisters like i have one older (laughs) sister and the amount of like criticism i got from her growing up yeah you definitely get like roughed around in the best way it is the best way because it is i would want a friend to tell me if i looked terrible totally and like your sisters give it to you straight especially as the younger sister they're like you look silly today no like i remember my first makeup memory was buying this maybelline dream matte mousse do you remember that product yes of course literally like so nostalgic i bought it wrong color so orange and i would just put that all over my face and that's it i wouldn't do blush bronzer powder i would literally just put that foundation on my face oh my god and i remember my mom took it away from me and hit it and i was like you know what i probably needed that i needed to be humbled (laughs) yeah i'm telling you my sisters dragged me by my hair because my eyeliner was like down to my cheekbones it was like smudgy because i thought that was cool and they were like, no, girly, like, let me teach you how to do it. I mean, those are the those are the things that shape you. It you really know? is. Those are the moments. And by the way, like, those are my first makeup memories. Like, they stick with you. But I, like, love those moments so much because yeah. I learned so much during that time. And I think it's it's really important to make those mistakes when you're younger. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's why I say now. It's so great to, like, communicate with your community in that way. I can imagine there are so many young women who are learning how to do their makeup through you no it's like I didn't have that growing up I had like a YouTube days but it was like a 20 minute get ready with me and like I didn't even have that sustainable I didn't have like YouTube didn't really pop off till I was like end of high school and like I had already needed to know by then I was so lucky I was a ballerina so I had to learn how to do stage makeup really young oh my god and that was like my tutorial so you really like had a big kind of like beauty very moment big. Yes. in your childhood yes I my hair people like know me on Instagram for having a bun in my hair all the time and oh I will literally God. get a DM once a day of like teach us how to do your slick bun and like honestly I've never done a video because yeah. it's literally muscle memory in my hands from yeah. doing a bun you like couldn't and even describe how you do it everyone's head shape is different like yeah. mine just fits my head shape I can't describe it but oh yeah it was like a red lip a winged liner Big blushy cheeks, like needed to know how to do all of that. I did by, like eighth step grade. dance. You did? Yeah, but I was like too nervous to compete. Okay, that's fine. So I like never got into it that much. I just did it as like an after school activity. But I always remember the older girls who like practice with us, and they had like all the wigs, and they were like these mm-hmm. like crazy curly wigs and so much makeup. I thought it was like the coolest thing ever, and they always had like the these tiaras. I loved it. Like the glam of it all is so fun. Masterclass at a young age, for sure. What was it like when Selena Gomez told you that you were her favorite TikToker? I, it it didn't feel real. Um, When I first met her at her press event, I literally was having a panic attack and I had to hold myself together as like, don't look like a weirdo. But I just remember like watching Wizards of Waverly Place, like on the couch with my sister and brother and just like, I grew up to her shows and being in the room with her like I truly felt like she wasn't a real person in front of me but I she is the sweetest human being she was so down to do any content and I love to advocate for mental health and so does she so I thought it would be like a good first video for us to do together like instead of just like applying lip gloss or whatever I thought it would be nice to kind of dive into that with her and get her view on all of it um And I know a lot of people follow her for that too. So I thought it would be nice to bring that to my followers on my page. But she's just the sweetest human being ever. She's so down to earth, humble. She looks beautiful. And the fact that she literally said I was her favorite TikToker, I just... I think your fans around the world like audibly 
clapped when that happened. Mm. I'll never forget scrolling my feed and seeing it. Again, you have such a community that loves you that I think everyone was so... Like, I was so happy for you when she was like, Meredith, and I was like, Tux, no, I, I was like, like yeah. what, me? Like, literally me? Like, it didn't feel real. And also when she tried my foundation technique, mm -hmm. I, it was crazy. Like, I still can't really wrap my head around it because just thinking back to, like, me in my college days or high school days, like, I would never, ever, ever think that those words would ever come out of Selena's mouth. And here I am. It just feels like so emotional to me I also feel like I love that you brought up mental health mm -hmm. and it's something that I think ties so again intrinsically into beauty the way that we feel is the way that we present ourselves and it just I, I love that that's what you chose to focus on with her and I also think you know something that I that deeply resonated with me recently that you posted was talking about seasonal depression and how oh my God, you, it's yeah. impacted you. When I was living here, I used to get it so badly as well. It was really challenging for me, especially being from California. It was just really, it, it totally threw my body clock off. It is so hard. And also this industry can be very lonely as much as it feels so chaotic and crazy. I'm home and I'm so grateful for this job. Like I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm not, I'm like beyond grateful and just so happy that that I have the opportunity to do all of this, but being in my apartment every day and not really speaking to many people, it can be hard. Like you get lonely. I have a social battery, so it's- Don't we all, babe? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard for me to be like, okay, you know what? You should probably go to a Pilates class with a friend or do this. I'm like, the whole year is so crazy and with events and fashion month and all this stuff. It's like, once you get downtime, you feel like you- should take that yes. and relax but then you're so on edge you're like this doesn't feel right I don't know what to do so it's a very weird situation I love that you shared that because I think I also loved how vulnerable you were in there about saying like look I'm so grateful but I'm allowed to feel like these feelings too yeah. and I just think that's why I think also the Selena Gomez thing felt so true to you because mm -hmm. You need to share those moments. Yep. Instagram and TikTok, especially these days, like I think if it's just a high ri highlight reel all the time or we're not sharing kind of what's going on behind mm -hmm. it all, to me, it doesn't feel as impactful. Yeah. And like I've had my fair share of like panic attacks and like really terrible moments with anxiety from such a young age. And I didn't have someone to be like, it's okay. Obviously, I had my mom, and but they're still figuring it out um, because – it's like when you have a young kid with panic attacks and anxiety, you're like, oh my God, what do I do? Like, I don't, where, yeah. where's this stemming from? So I just think it's important to get on and be kind of an advocate for mental health and be like, it's okay. I'm here for you. The comment section is open for you to vent. Of course, I'm going to comment back and give all my advice I can. And I wish I had something like that. There wasn't really a platform for that. So I think it's really important for all creators to add that in if they're passionate about it and they feel like they can connect with their followers on that. So I started Let's Get Dressed for that reason. Really? It kind of gave me that world to make myself feel better. Mm -hmm. It gave me the door to be able to do that and the tools to be able to do that. And getting it, getting dressed up and putting an outfit it on. It so good. I could feel like a totally different person mm -hmm. and my confidence is there and I just feel better. What is it for you? Yeah. With beauty, it's not even about, like, how I look after with the makeup on. Because I know some people are like, oh, my God, like, once I have the makeup on, I feel so much more confident. I also feel like that. But it's more about, like, the act of doing the makeup. It's so therapeutic. Sitting there, putting a good playlist on or talking to TikTok about whatever the topic is of the day. But it just feels so good to sit in silence or whatever it is and do the thing that you love most and going through the motions of putting on all the makeup it's so fun for me it's such like a girly moment and it's just the time of day where I can relax and have fun and I think a lot of people feel like that when they are getting dressed or they're doing their makeup it just makes you feel good I remember seeing on your Instagram that one of your goals was to walk a runway show uh-huh and then it happened and first of all, you had such a good look. Thank you had a great you. runway debut. Thank and you. I love GCDS. They're an oh, amazing they, team. I'm so grateful for them. Yeah, best team. Sweetest team. Ever. So now that you've accomplished that goal and you are merging into luxury, high fashion, what's, what's on the mood board next? What are we looking at? So I feel like 
anything that I do, I want to do like the best I can and just really pour all of myself into it. So I don't want to stop at one runway. I want to do as many as I can and just learn more about the industry in that way because sitting front row is so different than being a model for the for the designer or the runway you're seeing the designer work backstage seeing them work their magic the stylist there's so much that goes into it that you would not really see if you were just sitting front row and I think it's important to show that side of fashion and the industry to my followers because it's interesting and it's also how people learn more about the industry um so definitely more runways for sure um and my goal is to have a beauty line one day um i don't know what that looks like right now because i feel like the moment will feel right when it's time yes and i don't want to push something um when i feel like i'm just doing so well and so happy with where i am right now um i think it'll come when it's the right time definitely and that is a huge goal yeah if you had three products that you could only use for the rest of your life what are they Okay, first one is Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Liner. Yes, favorite. Oh my it's god. It's so good. It's I, I I literally have one in every single purse. Me too. You should Mine, see the one in my purse. It's this, this big. big. Oh my god. <laughs> Love that. I think every girl can relate. That's like the number one lip liner that everyone loves. It's iconic. It is the so best color. Are good. you wearing it now? Yeah. Yeah, it's the best color. And I'm wearing just like the Ola Henriksen lip treatment in the middle. So good. And it like blends it perfectly. Love. So good. You look so good. Thank you. Okay, so that one another Charlotte Tilbury product, Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. Okay. Because I feel like if I was on like a deserted island and I needed to make myself look good, Flawless Filter, you don't need to like add powder or bronzer to like make that look good. Nope. It just sits there pretty. I say it's the Paris Filter. Yes, exactly. Lip liner, easy. I would say hmm, maybe my Gucci blush, um, Tender Apricot. I'm like trying to like memorize my makeup cart in my head, what it looks like. But yeah, I think those three products I couldn't live without. I use them in every single thing. Look. Yeah. yeah, it's like always, the, that lip liner is always in my purse. You and I have a very similar train of thought. I'd say Iconic Nude. I'd probably say my Summer Fridays bomb. Wait, because did you I just see they came out with a new one? The, the, the lip oil. One. Oh, I saw that too. Oh my God. I, I tried it on this morning. It's so good. Of course it's so good. Yeah. Everything they make is perfect. Sorry to interrupt you. What was no, no, the, no. What Everything was is perfect. One? So the balm and then I'm such a brows girl. Like okay. even if I am like violently ill, I'm doing my brows. Really? Yes. I like do not leave my house without shaving so you my have brows. good brow. Like mine are very sparse. I feel like yours are like but nice and just like. That's why you can get away with not doing anything. Okay. Mine kind of have like an ashy tone to them if I don't fill them really? in and it makes my face look really flat. Okay. So like. How you love bronzer because it shapes mm-hmm. my brows shape my whole face. Yeah. So I use the Anastasia brow pen and it's my oh, favorite thing. Those so are my good. Three. Yeah. What I did to my brows, I um plucked off the ends of them. <laughs> and I literally I, like, I as a brow girl, <laughs> like literally start to like <sighs> my boyfriend when people was like, do this to their brows. What did you do to your brows? But I think it's like probably like But wait, a, you did it now? I did it like months ago, but then it, then you can fill them into whatever shape you like because the end is off. So if you want to draw them down more or you want more of like a snatch Bella Hadid look, you can draw them up. Yep. So I think it's like definitely something I learned from the beauty industry. Like it was a huge trend on TikTok. Everyone was just plucking off the end of their brows. I've got to say, like I am such a loyalist, like never doing anything to my brows, but you kind of just sold me on that because it's that end part it's that really end. can change the whole shape of your mm-hmm. face. Like if you want to draw your brows up, you can because you don't have like the brow hairs there they're gone but I don't want everyone maybe going. I was gonna say everybody while you're listening to this please like go to a brow person I'm looking go into the specialist. camera go to a specialist do not be plucking your brows at home I'm getting anxiety thinking about it don't do it guys it's like that TikTok don't yeah. do it I'm not gonna just thinking it. about it I did it this was so fun so fun I'm so glad I had you on the show thank you for making this your first pod of course I don't do a lot of pods but I felt like your energy is just so chill and Thanks. fun and you're like so fun to talk to thank and this you. was great too because I feel like a lot of people have questions about like my transition to fashion and how I'm like doing these two industries together and I feel like a lot of questions were answered on here great and you asked so many amazing questions so I'm thank so glad. you it was so fun hearing more about your story of there have been so, so many things I've wanted to ask you as someone who just loves to follow you and as a creator so I'm so glad that I got to answer them IRL I'm so happy I could give you all the info yay <laughs> thanks thank you